Hello friends, Stephen Bettle here. In this video, we're gonna dive into one of the most important skills in music production, recording and editing MIDI in Cubase. I'll walk you through setting up an instrument track, capturing your performance, and fine tuning your MIDI in the key editor. Along the way, we'll explore Halion Sonic, which is Steinbrick's free VST instrument player, and I'll show you how to load sounds, tweak them, and use some powerful MIDI editing tools to bring your ideas to life. Let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do here is load up a virtual instrument. Let's hit T and I'm gonna choose instrument. And if we click on this instrument menu, we can do a quick search. I'm gonna pull up Halion Sonic. Let's go ahead and add track. Okay, and here it is. You can see all of the different virtual instruments I have here for Halion. And by the way, if you wanna check out some of the freebies for Halion, just come to steinberg.net. There's quite a few to choose from and they all sound great. So I'll choose the free version of colors. Let's double click on this preset. And now that we've loaded this instrument, I'll just close this window for a second and I'll make sure my track is record enabled. And now we should be able to play this instrument with our MIDI keyboard. Okay, so that sounds cool. Let me give you a quick overview of Hellion Sonic. To bring it back into view, we're just gonna hit this edit instrument button. So over here on the right is our preset browser, of course, and the search function up here makes it really easy to find the right preset based on category properties. We also have other options here. If we click this little gear icon, we can search based on style, articulations, and so on. So if we click style here, for example, drop this menu down, we can search under ambient here. Let's choose dark ambient. And if we click all libraries, just like that, I have all of these presets that fit that description across all of my different libraries. Now over to the left here, I've got these program slots. Now we can load another virtual instrument into one of these empty programs and use two or more instruments at the same time. So let's click into program number two and let's say I'll load my Alto Glockenspiel. Let's double click. I'll make sure the Glockenspiel is also coming out of MIDI channel number one. And now when I play my MIDI keyboard, you're going to hear both the glockenspiel and the colors instrument at the same time. And if we want to adjust the mix between these two instruments, just come over here to where it says mix and we can turn the glockenspiel up or colors down. And Halion Sonic also has built in effects. So if we want to throw some reverb on this glockenspiel, for example, just come up to inserts. And these are all the same effects that come with the full version of Halion. Let's click under reverb and we'll add some reverence. I'll push the mix all the way up. So let's switch gears here and record something. I'm gonna close this Halion Sonic window. I'm also gonna make sure to activate my metronome so I can record to a click and let's hit record. Okay, so nothing fancy, just four simple chords. I'm just gonna rename this track real quick. Now we can see this MIDI event here. Let's double click on it, and that will display our MIDI in the key editor in the lower zone. Let's zoom in just a bit here. So first off, we can click, hold, and drag, and select whatever MIDI notes we need. And any notes you have selected, you can move them up and down easily using your up and down arrows on the keyboard. We can also adjust their length and their position. And if we zoom right in, you can clearly see that I didn't play these chords right on the grid. I'm a bit early here, for example. And we can fix that using the quantize function. So if we select these notes, for example, and hit Q, instantly these notes lock right to the grid. Now I'll just undo that and quickly show you that you don't necessarily need to quantize the notes 100%. If we press this E button here, we can bring up the quantize panel. And here's where you can really fine tune how you quantize your MIDI. For example, if we come down here to where it says mode, we'll turn soft quantize on and I'll set my quantize strength here at 75%. And now if I hit Q, you'll see that it doesn't completely lock it to the grid, but it just gets a bit closer. I usually work with soft quantize on so that when I do quantize my performances, they don't sound too rigid or robotic. So you can hit command or control A if you wanna select all of your MIDI. I'm gonna do that and hit Q to quantize everything. And maybe we can use another layer here. Let's pull up a new instrument. And I should mention there's more than one way to load an instrument in Cubase. We can also come over to the media bay. Let's select VST instruments. And from here we can search Halion. So again, I'll pull up Halion Sonic. And now I can search all of my Halion instrument presets in the media bay. Let's try the Navia Harp free edition. There's just one preset here. If I double click on it, then it loads in our session. So let's click our edit instrument button. And here's the Navia Harp, beautiful free instrument. Let's hit record, see what happens.
Okay, cool. So again, I'll double click on this MIDI event. And if I select all and quantize, you can see I have a problem here. It didn't really work. And that's simply because I'm playing some 16th notes here and I have my quantize value set to eighth notes. So let's hit that menu and change this to 16th notes. And now if I hit quantize, that should sound better. Now you probably notice there's this lane here at the bottom that's representing our MIDI velocity. Velocity being a measurement of how hard I'm hitting the keys on my MIDI keyboard. Now with all of these selected, I can actually come up here to the top in the middle and bring the velocity of all of these notes down, which of course makes the harp sound a lot softer, or I can scale these all up, which has the opposite effect. Now if I come over to the right of this lane and place my cursor right in the middle, I can scale around absolute center, which effectively compresses the velocities. This could be really useful if you want the performance to sound a bit more even, or I can tilt these velocities and create velocity ramps. So for example, I could start out real soft and increase the velocity slowly from the start of this performance to the end. And one last quick tip for making velocity adjustments. If you have notes selected, you don't have to come down to the velocity lane to change the value. Instead, you can just hold down shift plus command or control, and you'll see that little speaker icon show up. And if we just click and drag, you can make the adjustment really easily and you can actually hear the difference as well. Now, coming back to the controller lane here at the bottom, we can also view other functions. For example, if we come over here to where it says velocity and click, we can switch this to say modulation or sustain pedal information. And we can also customize this view so that we're seeing multiple lanes at once. Just come down to this little plus sign here in the bottom left. Let's set up a separate lane for velocity. We can change our sustain pedal back to modulation and we can adjust the size of each of these lanes independently. Pretty cool. And while we're in the key editor here, a few other really important tools when it comes to editing MIDI. If we right click, we can switch over to the draw tool and this enables me to draw in MIDI notes manually using my split tool, just the same as if you were editing an audio event. I can make a slice in the middle of this note and cut it into two separate notes, or I can use my glue tool to join them back together. Super easy. So there's a lot more to cover, of course, but those are some MIDI editing basics. It's a quick overview of some of the tools that I use regularly in my workflow. And one last MIDI feature I wanna show you here is retrospective record. So let me show you how this works. Let's say I copy these chords out and starting at bar five, I wanna start working on a new harp melody. And I'll just go ahead and press play. I won't record it. I'll just improvise something. So maybe there was an idea in there that I really liked, but oops, I didn't press record. I should have, but I didn't. Well, it turns out it actually doesn't matter because Cubase is actually secretly recording what you're playing in the background, even though you didn't press record. If I come over here to the inspector on the left, where it says insert recording, and I press this, let's insert as linear recording, and there you go. There's my idea right there. So if you're just jamming and you play something that you're really happy about, but you didn't capture it, just remember retrospective record. It's got your back. So earlier in this video, we checked out Halion Sonic, which is again, a free virtual instrument player. We also used some free instruments available for Halion, but Steinberg has a great selection of virtual instruments outside of the Halion ecosystem. And the ones that I'm gonna show you right now are included with Cubase Pro. So I went ahead and added a few ideas to this track, starting with Retrolog. Retrolog is a powerful virtual analog synthesizer that delivers the warm, rich sound of classic analog gear and excels at crafting everything from fat basses to searing leads to lush pads and vintage style arpeggios. In this track, I'm using a patch called Plasmatic to add some bass to the mix. And I used a different Retrolog preset to double our harp lead. then I felt like some percussion was needed. So I'm using two instances of the drum track here, also included with Cubase Pro, and I'm using two different included presets. This one's called Retro Romance and another one called Dust and Grit. <music> and 
And then lastly, I thought I'd use some Pad Shop, which is Steinberg's cutting edge granular and spectral synthesizer, perfect for creating deep atmospheric textures and evolving soundscapes. I'm using a patch here from one of my favorite expansion packs, Granular Guitars. Sounds super cool. So I'll go ahead and add a bit of texture to this track. And that's our overview of recording and editing MIDI in Cubase. We covered setting up instrument tracks, recording performances, editing in the key editor, and even using retrospective record to save those happy accidents. I highly recommend checking out Halion Sonic and exploring some of the free instruments. And I also recommend learning more about Retrolog and Pad Shop, which are included with Cubase Pro and Cubase Artist. Check out the links in the description of this video or feel free to go to steinberg.net to learn more. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.